Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be going over my top 5 favorite video game franchises of all time. I'm doing this because I've always wanted to make a video about video games, but I've always felt like that genre is kind of oversaturated on YouTube, because literally everyone talks about video games, even people that really shouldn't. The way he leaps off of rooftops and flips backwards to face the camera before falling into a headfirst dive is just full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. Seriously, who let this man cook? Why would GameSpot publish this? But anyways, ignoring that GameSpot review, I wanted to talk about my favorite games because I just thought it would be a cool video idea. And like I said, I've been wanting to jump in on this trend for a while. So without further ado, let's jump into the list, which just for the record is from worst to best. Although the games at the worst are still some of my favorites, but just thought I'd mention that to make it clear. Anyways, let's jump into the video now, shall we? You've gotten a lot farther than you should have, but then you haven't met Frank Horgan either. Your ride's over, Muty. Time to die. Fallout is really the only game series where I feel like I'm playing the RPG the right way, i.e. the way I want to play it. I can make a cool mercenary type character who only really cares about money and caps, and choose to work for whoever I feel best reflects that motivation, whether that be Mr. House in New Vegas, or perhaps one of the slaver tribes from Fallout 2. Hell, even Fallout 1, a game way back in 1998, gave you that option between Killian and the mayor of the town. Other RPGs just never really appeal to me as much as the original Fallout games and even some of the newer ones do. Because even though their options usually aren't limited, they do feel limiting in the sense that there's a very clear good or bad option. I.e. what would a good morally righteous character do versus what would a bad morally repugnant character do. Fallout manages to avoid that trap because it really makes every playstyle and every possible motivation interesting and complex. Because you you're not just asking yourself what a good or bad person would do, instead the game provides you with ideals and philosophies that are already complex and interesting from the real world player perspective, but become even more complex when you think about it in game and in character. For example, obviously I as a person can understand how Caesar's Legion is a horribly terrible degenerate group of slavers that are basically ruining society, but would someone in universe, born in the Mojave wasteland, who's constantly having having to deal with raiders and the NCR shaking them down for more money or caps, really have such a big deal with the way Caesar conducts himself? Sure, he's harsh, but that harshness is why no raiders come and bother his tribesmen. And unlike the NCR, they don't really bother shaking down normal people to try to get them to help them in their morally righteous cause. No, they have a pretty clear philosophy of either join us or stay out of our way, which helps make the player's choice of whether or not to join them a bit more interesting and complex. Unfortunately though, while the series does boast one of the most interesting stories in gaming history, the gameplay really brings the series down in my opinion. While the first two games aren't horrible, its combat just feels extremely repetitive and bland. Again, turn-based games at the time weren't that impressive to begin with, but Fallout really didn't help make this problem any better. And 3 and New Vegas in my opinion have some of the worst gunplay I've seen in any video game ever. It's so hard for for me to go back and replay those games today. Yes, I know, that's kind of a me problem, but honestly, I just really can't stand the shooting in those games. And traversing around the world is just dull and boring in my opinion. Sure, you can occasionally encounter something really interesting, but I never really feel incentivized to do so because this world is supposed to be hostile and dangerous, so I should really focus on only getting to where I need to go. 3 is a little better about it than New Vegas, but even still, I don't think it's anything to write home about. Out. So unfortunately, this series is on the lower tier of games that I really love, but I think it's worth experiencing for the story and role-playing elements alone. So make sure you play it if you haven't already. With that out of the way, let's move on to my next favorite game series. It is said that the Force has a will. It has a destiny for us all. I wield it, but it uses us all, and that is abhorrent to me, because I hate the Force. I hate that it seems to have a will that it would control us to achieve some measure of balance when countless lives are lost. 
I know I just spent the last 4 minutes talking about how most RPG games don't appeal to me because they don't really let you craft your own character the way Fallout does, but KOTOR manages to do something a little different that I find even more spectacular than Fallout. It lets you influence its story and its characters and where they all end up. You, the character, are more just a vessel for the plot, but unlike most stories where that ends up being a very boring thing, you get to still customize your character and make decisions based on a certain set of ideals or philosophies, and while they're not all quite as complex as Fallout's, they're still pretty interesting and dynamic. Plus, the gameplay is just so much better than the Fallout games. It's not only more visually impressive to see your character pull off crazy cool action, but it's also mechanically far more impressive, in that grinding for skills and finally getting to see your character become overpowered as hell is a lot more fun than it is in Fallout, because even late into Fallout's gameplay, you still feel like you're always one stray bullet away from death, at least in the older titles, but even the newer ones still have a kind of absurd difficulty scale, where it's either way too easy or way too hard, with really no in-between. KOTOR feels like a more gradual progression, at least in my opinion. But going back to what I was talking about earlier about your character being a vessel for the plot, I not only meant that writing-wise, but I also meant that literally. In both games, your character is a very important person that has already influenced the events of this world to an extreme degree, and the second game straight up gives you powers over people, albeit indirectly, to explain how you're able to mold the other characters into either becoming Jedi or Sith followers. And that's really the most appealing part of both games, being able to influence the other characters and deciding on their characters' endings and journeys. I mean, depending on how you play KOTOR 1, it can be an amazing redemption story, where even the main villain in his final moments looks back on what he's done and realizes that he was wrong, or it can be the story of an evil determined villain rising back to power who heartlessly chops down his former apprentice who betrayed him. It's just such an amazing journey that I sadly haven't replayed in a little bit because I was kind of waiting on that KOTOR remake so I wanted to not play it for a little bit so the story would be fresh in my mind and I could replay it with new graphics and re-experience that magic again, only for the game to get delayed indefinitely. Oh well, at least I still have the original games, which are still still incredible. The only reason why they're so low on the list is really just because I love the other games on this list even more than I love KOTOR. Plus, while I have come to term with KOTOR 2's cliffhanger, it kinda sucks that the series technically still isn't finished even to this day, which does drag it down slightly. But for those of you interested in my favorite series of finished games, you're going to be very interested in my number 3 favorite game franchise. First, if you would be so kind. Hand over my jaw. The Batman Arkham series encaptures everything that I love about this character, and it not only did it once, it did it four times. Four times they were able to capture the great psychological torment that goes on within Bruce and all of his villains' minds, with a little help from the audio tapes. And they managed to deliver such great blockbuster movie-style storylines that were just incredible to sit through. True, they're not as morally complex as something like Fallout, nor are they as interactable as something like KOTOR, but they still are fun, great stories. And in the case of the Arkham series, they work very well with the gameplay, which is the main reason why this is so much higher up than Fallout and KOTOR, because its gameplay is incredible, an incredible freeform combat system that really does just get more and more challenging the further you go down in the series, as well as an expertly made stealth system. And the greatest thing is, is that they work in tandem. See, recently I started playing Half-Life 2, and I like it, don't get me wrong, but I kind of don't like how the shooting is interrupted by platforming. It feels like it's taking away from the main purpose of the game. Whereas the Arkham series, I don't get that feeling. I'm always looking forward to the next stealth sequence when I'm doing some freeform combat on some thugs, and I'm always looking forward to that freeform combat system when I'm doing a stealth section where I need to hide from those same thugs. It's such a unique dynamic, I'm always left wanting more from the game, and it never fails to deliver. And on top of everything I just mentioned, a great combat system, a great stealth system, and a great story, these games also have some of my favorite bosses in any video game franchise. I mean, come on, everybody knows about the Mr. Freeze boss by now, even if they've never even touched one of these games. Having to crawl around and figure out new ways to take him down as he slowly adapts to your arsenal is so anxiety 
anxiety building, but in the best of ways. And he's only one of the amazing bosses in this series. My personal favorite is the Bane boss from the Arkham Origin games. It expertly managed to weave together that amazing free flow combat with an even greater stealth segment at the end of his second boss fight. And these two bosses are only just scratching the surface of all the great Batman Arkham series bosses like Deathstroke and Copperhead or Two-Face and Catwoman's DLC. There's honestly just too many to list, so if you haven't already, please go play the Batman Arkham series. It's easily one of my favorite gaming franchises of all time, and is only narrowly beaten out by the next pick on this list. What can I even say about Halo that hasn't already been said by a million different YouTubers on this site? I mean, it's literally 30 seconds of fun, the game. It's an incredible first person shooter that has a great campaign with an amazing story with great gameplay that you can adjust by making it either more difficult or by turning on skull modifiers to change it up a bit in order to tailor the game more to your liking. And if all that isn't enough for you, you have a great multiplayer experience that's still very active to this day due to how great the games were. It's simply a masterpiece. Well, at least the first three games are. Reach and ODST are fine, although I still haven't really completed ODST, so I guess I can't speak on that. And the 343 games are... You know what, let's not talk about 343 for once. Let's just focus on how great the original trilogy was. Now unlike the rest of the games on this list, I actually kinda grew up with Halo a little bit. I didn't play them when they first came out, but I did get the MCC collection a year or two after it launched with my brand new Xbox One. I still remember that day. There I was, with the brand new Xbox One, loading up Halo MCC. I had heard about this game series, but never actually gotten around to playing it. So I loaded up the first game, not knowing that it was about to be a life-changing experience for little 7th grade me. Halo showed me that games could tell just as good of a story, if not a better one, than movies and shows can, and it's what got me addicted to first-person shooters. Without Halo, I don't know what kind of gamer, scratch that, I don't know what kind of person I'd be today. Cause when I say I grew up with it, I mean I literally grew up with it. Halo helped me meet so many people, and discover so many new things like online multiplayer and playing with friends, and, and so slowly but surely birthed the critic in me once I started looking into other people's thoughts and opinions about the newer games after feeling a little indecisive towards them, to say the least. Yes, that's right, you heard that right, kids. I didn't become a critic due to Ben 10 retcons, I became a critic due to Halo retcons. Still can't believe 343 Guilty Spark was a caveman, but whatever. Anyways guys, there's really not much else to say about Halo that you probably haven't already heard about. It had a masterful use of both music and visuals, and used its cutscenes and dialogue sparingly, so as to not overwhelm the player with story, so that they were always back in the action as soon as possible. And really, it just had everything going for it. A cool universe, a cool cast of characters, cool action. It was just amazing. Honestly, as a teen, I wished I had played it back in the day, since I know all my experiences probably would have been heightened, because everyone was playing it back then, and it seemed like everyone was talking about it, whereas in my teen years, it kind of died out a little bit because of Halo 4 and 5. But looking back now, I'm glad I got into it when I did. I got to experience it all at once and still make tons of new memories and friends along the way, just like I would have back then. If you haven't played Halo yet, check out the MCC. It has all the old Halo games packed together in a collection, so you too can experience this great game franchise all at once. Well, minus Halo 5, but well, Halo 5 sucks, so that's not a big loss. Anyways, I think we're ready for my number one pick, my favorite game series of all time. Although it's technically only one major game, it's still great. Okay, I know I literally just said that I grew up with Halo, and yes, I did grow up with Halo, it did help me through my teen years, but before that, there was Minecraft. Right around the time that I first moved to a new school and had no friends and hated the way I looked, all I really had to look forward to was new episodes of my favorite cartoon show, Ben 10. 
and new videos by my favorite Minecraft YouTubers on one of my favorite games. I loved this game before I ever even touched it. It just looked so fun. You got to run around doing literally whatever you wanted and could download tons of mods to make your experience so much better. Eventually I would get the game on some weird discount card, then I would download Pocket Edition on my Kindle, then on my parents phone so I could play it, and then finally I downloaded it for my PC and fell back in love with the game during my later teen years. I just gotta say it's a fun game man, there's really not that much else to it. It's a fun sandbox where you can literally do whatever you want. You can explore to your heart's content or build great cities and structures to live in. It's the ultimate casual game in my experience, but there's still some fun competitiveness to be had in some of the online servers. And this game still receives updates to this day that drastically change the way the game plays. I mean it wasn't that long ago that we got a major update that made diamond only the second strongest item in the game. It's genuinely crazy to me that Minecraft has grown and changed along with me throughout the years. It's something I genuinely have a hard time processing because every time I play it I feel like I'm just that same kid again who fell in love with this game during its heyday with all those Minecraft YouTubers running around making videos. I think you've all played Minecraft by now so I'm not really gonna bother explaining it but just know that I love it and I really loved making this video. It was really fun to think about some of my favorite games again and has really motivated me to want to go back and replay those games which I'm definitely gonna do as soon as this recording is done. So anyway guys I'm A10 and this has been my top 5 favorite gaming franchises of all time. Let me know your favorite game franchises down in the comment section below and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and maybe consider subscribing and sharing the video too if you really enjoyed it or just want to help me grow my channel. Anyways that's all for now. Bye guys.